So Roblox has released a new update for the meshes, which is mostly about the mass properties, which also includes its physics and the collision geometry. But as usual, leave a like and subscribe to support the channel, and let's get into the video. So I'm mostly going to overview the deform pose first, and that's because there is a bit to basically talk about. And the link to this is going to be in the description. But you mostly just have the improved mass properties, the coupling collision geometry and mass properties, which is a beta feature. And let's just start off with the TLDR, which tells you about the new mass calculation method for meshes. And the mass properties are going to be the mass, the center of mass, as well as the moments of inertia. And now they will be based on the assets meshes volume instead of the collision geometry volume. Then you have the consistency, where they want to make meshes in this update be more consistent with the mass properties of the meshes. Then you just have the impact on new meshes, where this is going to affect the imported mesh parts and CSG operations, and the existing meshes are going to have to be migrated manually. Then you just have the potential breaking changes, as well as this saying that this is a feedback period, where this is going to be a beta feature for basically two weeks. So that's just for the basic info and let's move to the rest of the post where currently the mass properties of the mesh, like I previously mentioned, are calculated from the volume of the mesh's collision geometry, which is dictated by the collision field T option. And they want to make it so it's going to be more reliant, ensuring that changes in the collision field T won't affect the mesh's mass properties. And like they mentioned, this is also going to set a stage for future improvements to physics and geometry on the platform. But then they have the why are we doing this paragraph which basically just says that it's going to be easier for you to change the collision field T, while that option isn't going to affect the mass of the mesh. And it's going to be easier for creators to build with physics in a more intuitive manner. And then what is exactly changing? And this is again from the TLDR, it's going to be on new mesh parts and CSG results, and this change will not affect meshes that are already in the published experiences, meshes imported before the change, and meshes published to the toolbox. And these meshes are going to have their mass properties temporarily frozen at their least calculated values. And here they are saying that the migration can happen at any time, and you are also going to have the script available that you can run on parts that you wish to migrate. Then this is enabling the beta feature, saying that you can basically switch back and forth, but you are going to have to change it manually every time. And then about the why should you care paragraph, this change can basically produce different physical results for the new meshes you upload. So if you are for example making a game that uses constraints, align position and other physics and so on, if you have a set of old meshes in that game, then you opt into the beta feature and then upload new meshes, before the first meshes get migrated, both of the meshes are going to have different physical results. So it's going to be better to take that into account for consistency. And then the potential breaking changes is saying that the only experiences that may break are those that use the create mesh part async method. All different CSG operations and these meshes mass properties are used for physical gameplay in highly tuned sensitive manner. So if your game just has few, I don't know, assets just laying around and you can basically just move them, it's not going to be a really big deal, but if the experience is anything heavy physics related, then there might be a chance of something breaking. But like with all of the different beta features, I recommend that they aren't used in live games. Then right here they are just saying that on Monday, October 14th, they plan to transition to a full rollout. And going back to the place from my previous video about being able to pause the physics simulation that I recommend you watch, what I'm going to do right now is just import a mesh. And I just noticed that there is a flat terrain place. I don't remember the grass being here, but anyways, well, I'm just going to use this guy. So I basically just have a place with physics ready as well as a mesh. And now we need to enable the feature by going into file and beta features and then scrolling down to the Improved Mass Properties option. And the details are saying enable calculating masses for mesh parts and CSG operations based on their mesh instead of their collision filiety. And all mesh parts and CSG operations will not be affected until you change their collision filiety. So you just need to enable this feature and then press on save. And it's going to prompt us to restart the Roblox Studio. So let's just do it right now. And now that we have the beta feature enabled, well, we can't really see anything that changed since all of the stuff that I talked about is basically just happening on Roblox's backend. Like, we don't really have any new properties. What basically changed is going to be the mass, point of the mass, and everything else that used to calculate the mesh's physics that we can't really see anything off of. 
But to talk a little bit more about the collision field ET, how we change this property now is not going to affect how the mesh reacts with the physics. There is the box, default, hull and then the precise convex decomposition. Where the box is basically just a box that you can well see from the selection, the default is I believe a voxel based hull. What the hull would be is for example, imagine different points on the slime, if it was made from different dots. I'm just going to present it like this. So it's not really accurate, but like you can imagine that these were the voxel points that would be set around the mesh. And how a hull works, it basically just creates a mesh which topology is built around the points that it contains. So if you had these points, it would basically just create a part that's going like this, which is going to contain every single one of these voxel points. Except it's not going to be a cube, but rather a shape made out of triangles. But continuing, then you have the hull, which collision is basically just going to be the same as the whole mesh itself. So now you can see that it's rotating like this, instead of just being a box. And then the precise convex decomposition, I'm not really sure what this option is, so I'm just going to move to the documentation. So a collision model uses a convex hull decomposition of the visual mesh, which is computed by a variation of algorithm called HACD. I don't really know what's that either. This option is the most accurate representation of collision geometry for complex objects, with building tolerances to reduce the total number of convex hulls, by composing on accuracy when justified. So I'm guessing that it just creates an accurate convex hull, and then just reduces its number of geometry for the collision mesh. So that's basically all for the collision field ET property, and how you can basically just change it without affecting the mesh's mass. And let's also talk about the mesh migration. So first you just want to select different meshes that you want to migrate, then go to the model tab, and then the run script option. Then just select a txt file and it's going to say no parts were updated. And that's because I previously mentioned that changing the collision field that is going to already update this option. So again, let me just copy another mesh. And I'm going to do the same while having another slime selected. And it said updated the mass properties of one parts. And also really quickly another option if you don't want to create a txt file and paste the script there then just select it here. If I just have another mesh and just select it, what I can do is go to the view tab and make sure I have the command bar. And then I can just paste the code into the command bar. And again it's going to say updated the mass properties of one part. Well maybe not everything is working correctly with this update, but yeah. That's going to be basically everything for today. So if you haven't go check out my UGCs, and again leave a like and subscribe to support the channel. Thank you for watching and see ya guys.